You know what is so cool about that? And this is where my mind goes, because I think way back to when I first started, I was just like, I just if I could just get one damn credit on IMDb. And the cool thing about having a podcast is that technically this is a TV credit. So you could take that episode that you have and you could put that on, on IMDb. That writer gets the credit. Welcome to the podcast. This is so exciting. I've got on the hosts from Pitch, which is a screenwriting podcast where you can go on as a screenwriter and you can actually get to pitch to the hosts. It's pretty amazing. Get a lot of exposure that way. I've got Leah St. Marie and Angel Daoud Murphy. Thanks for being on, guys. Hey, thanks. Yeah, thanks for having us. Oh, no, this is awesome. I, I'm always up for a podcast swap, and I and I appreciate the kitty co-host today as well. We had a little yeah. fur baby walking by. So She's all about it. I want to hear about the origin of pitch and uh, pitch exclamation mark. And where does it where does it come from? What was the inspiration? And uh, where are you going with it? Angel and I did uh, the Sundance collab, and they were really hammering in how you pitch something. And I think their main point on on the lab was, why are you important? And I was like, yeah, I'm important. Um, why is the story important to you? And then I got to thinking, like, I know so many people who have so many stories that are important to them. But as Angel likes to say, a pitch dies in the room. Like, there's not any repository for them once they're spoken. And once they do their rounds, they're kind of gone. And I don't like that. I don't like that it's so hard in the industry and it's getting harder to even get in the room. So we kind of decided as collaborators that we would be the room. I love that. I I, I love that. I think archiving pitches is also a great way that a screenwriter can use that as part of their resume. Like, oh, if you want to hear this pitch I have, you go to episode, you know, 20 of yeah. of pitch and then i so i think there that's a really uh cool niche that you guys are creating for yourselves and so i did a little bit of digging and i see that you guys are offering like table reads too so that people can kind of hear the voice of the of the writer as actors are are reading it yeah we have um we have a pretty robust um, network of actors uh, here in LA. I'm, I'm in Hollywood based and I worked at an acting studio for a long time. And we, and we decided to um, table read the first three pages of everyone's script who submits a pitch and that's their, awesome. their first three pages. So yeah, if, if someone likes the, the pitch that they heard, they can quickly audibly hear the first three pages rather than having to sit down and read another script, which we yeah. all know is a task in this town. <laughs> You know what is so cool about that? And this is where my mind goes, because I think way back to when I first started, I was just like, I just, if I could just get one damn credit on IMDb. And the cool thing about having a podcast is that technically this is a TV credit. So you could take that episode that you have and you could put that on, on IMDb. That writer gets the credit and they get the credit for their little, uh, a uh, few pages that are read of their sh of their script, which I think that is so cool that you can offer that. I mean, nobody can offer that really. I didn't know that you could do that for a podcast, and so I would encourage all of the writers who have been on the podcast to add it to their IMDb. And if they don't have an IMDb yet, what a what a powerful gift! Yeah, absolutely. So you can um, you can put pitch right on IMDb as your show, and you two are the hosts of it. And then as you as you put the credits in, there's just like doing a TV episode, but it's of the of the podcast. And then you can have the writer on there. The writer has that credit, so it's pretty awesome. And then you can even add the actors on there too. So then the actors have the credit on it as well. So it is is like I see that, and I just see so much cool potential of exposure you're getting these guys and and uh, screenwriters out there. Um, and I'm excited about it. 
Uh, I just think it's good. So how is how's the reception been? I'm I'm hoping pretty positive, and I'm sure you're probably getting drowned out in submissions, right? Well, that's the that's kind of the ironic thing is there are a lot of uh, I guess a well established screenwriting podcasts out there. Um, screenwriting life, there's sure. script notes, and those are wildly successful, wildly tenured um, writers and podcasters. And I was just, I tell Leah this all the time. I was like, I didn't even get into script notes until a couple of years ago. And yeah. they've been going for years and years and years for that yeah. point. So we, the reception has been largely positive from people who've listened to it. Right. But I think it takes a long time of sustained effort to build an audience base to get the recognition that I think, um, not that it deserves, but to, to get the recognition of what it actually is and the value it's providing. So every, yeah. everybody, everybody's been super positive when they've heard it. Good. We had so, some people um, on the producerial side when we were like talking about the idea, say, no, that's a terrible idea. No one's going to want to give up their IP. Don't do it. There's all these like issues by you know sharing a pitch. And we, we had some workarounds with that. But the product itself, now that it's out there, people seem to love um, and we're still doing it. So, you know, yeah, I, I can see producers concerns with that, but you can always have, you know, I look at pitch as it, I look at pitching as a, as I look at any time I send a script out and I, I don't, when I'm pitching you the script or we're chatting about the script, I really don't care if you buy the script. Like that's not my intention behind pitching and you can call me crazy my intention behind pitching or getting my work to a new director or producer is to introduce them to my voice i want you to see who i am i want you to see how i write i want you to see what i can do um, because more likely than not you're not going to be interested in the pitch that i have but if you like what i can come up with and you like what i can do i'll be in the back of your mind and the next thing you know, I'll be getting a phone call about, you know, I've got this script that needs a little work on. And I'll be like, oh, well, you know, I, I can do that. It's in my wheelhouse. So I would encourage people, if they have a script, go on there and pitch it. Um, and and just know that when you're pitching, your, you're pitching yourself. And that, that's what, Leah, you mentioned when we first started um, about why is this they said to you, why is, why is this important to you? Why is this script matter to you? Why? And, and, and it really is about pitching yourself, isn't it? It isn't just, um, here's my story and you read it from a piece of paper dry. You're introducing yourself and who you are to these, to these potential coworkers. I would say speaking to kind of being laid back about pitching and having all of your eggs in one basket and they have to buy this thing. I like your attitude of it's not, you're not in the room to sell the pitch. You're in the room to sell yourself, right? Whatever that room is. Yeah. So it's kind of like, I would compare it to be Paul Newman and don't be John, John Cusack and all those 80s films. Like don't be neurotic and don't like yeah. hold on to something so tightly that if it doesn't happen, it's, you think it's never going to happen for me. Oh, they hated it. Don't be cousin Greg. If you watch yeah. <laughs> Secession. <laughs> Yeah. Well, um, well, don't be uh, that. <laughs> uh, yeah, don't be cooking Greg. No, I love that. Yeah, it really is. And, and I've literally ended up, uh, in, I was in Vegas doing a, um, I was hosting script summit, which is my screenwriting competition. And then I, I was doing book signings there too, for my book. And they had a Star Trek convention there and I'm, I'm a huge Star Trek fan, but I'm not like crazy, like Star Wars, hence the background. Now, I was in an elevator. I was like, I think that guy might have been in Star Trek, but I wasn't sure. And I was leaving him alone, you know, because they're there. They're and they're kind of like they're working. They they're signing autographs and everything. Um, and so he's asking me, you know, hey, are you uh, are you here for the convention? I'm like, no. And I'd say I'm signing books. And he goes, really? He goes, yeah. And so I ended up pitching him my book right there in the elevator. And then he ended up taking a copy and and loving it. So it is Wait, it is crazy. You, you actually did an elevator pitch. Yeah, I actually did an elevator. <laughs> I didn't think those existed anymore because who's on an elevator anymore? But wow. Yeah, exactly. We've, it's it's, we've it's wild. Only yeah. in Vegas. <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, so, um, all right. Tell me with pitch, where can people find it? I think find it everywhere. Yeah, it's on all the podcasting platforms: Apple Music, Amazon. Um, we have a we have streaming on YouTube. If you want to, you know, put it up on YouTube. 
um, and then the subscription portion, which actually contains the writer's pitches mm -hmm. and the, and the table reads that, um, is, uh, pitch.supportingcast.fm, I believe. Okay. Or you can any, access any, any of this stuff through Street Lamp Media's website, right, Leah? That's correct, Street Lamp Media. So in the future, how do people submit a script to your show? And I got some follow-up questions after that. Sure. So you can submit your scripts. Um, you can contact me on, on Twitter or Instagram. I'm Leah Welch 19 on Twitter and Leah.st.marie, Leah St. Marie on Instagram. Or you can email me, uh, Leah St. Marie at Gmail for all of that. And then there's like a long list of very easy steps in order for you to pitch your stuff to us. And we ask for it in audio format because it's a podcast. Can I ask where you two met and started collaborating? Um, she was producing a, a short film my friend was in, and then she subsequently, Leah, hired me or asked me to do a couple table reads over Zoom for some of her scripts. And then she hired me for a feature film that she wrote and directed. Called In the Light of the Moon, and it just went to Cannes. I think it sold, not the, not like it showed at Cannes, but it was part of the, right. the marketing yeah. and distribution. You know, they sell films there. So it's yeah. in the light mm -hmm. of the moon, um, and it's a retelling of Beowulf. It's an art house horror. Ooh, that's mm -hmm. exciting! Congratulations! Thank you, Angel. Um, just continues to say yes to me. I don't know why for acting well, and well, collaborating. On that, on that shoot, I pitched her the idea for the script that I was writing next, and I said, "Oh, this is my idea of the feature I want to write and direct." Yeah, and she said, "That sounds great. I'm on board for however you need me." You want me to produce whatever you need. Um, so it was, we we really like connected through pitching. Oh, I like your ideas. You're a good actor, but also you write too great. Let's let's collaborate going forward on stuff. That's and awesome. Then I, and then I read his stuff and he was actually good. So I was like, whew. <laughs> <laughs> that is, is hilarious. That's, I don't think people understand yeah. from, from any point of view that the, the danger in writing and or reading friends scripts or submitting a script to your friend is that it might not be good and that might ruin the connection or ruin the friendship because then can you be honest you can't be honest with anybody in this town right what what's the what's the one word you want you never want to hear from somebody when they read your script a lack of words uh, just a ghosting leah what's the one word you want to, you never want to hear when someone reads your script i don't i think it's a it's an elliptical sentence that goes, I got bored at page. Okay. If you ever hear this word from somebody, and this is for everybody at home, if you ever hear this word from somebody, they hated your script. If they say it was interesting, they hated your script. <laughs> interesting. Yes. yes. They will never read it again. That is the, that is the word you never want to hear. Yeah, it was, um, yeah, it was interesting. Uh, it's, it's either interesting <laughs> or I ask them, hey, did you like my script or did you like my short film? And they go, your hair looks amazing today. Oh, God. <laughs> See, if I read it, if I read a, a a script and I don't like it, since since I, I can I teach screenwriting and, and they go, what do you think? And I go, well, I have notes. <laughs> and, so, and then it's a come to Jesus moment. And we have and you know, there's 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 a there's some serious discussion going on. All right. So. Uh, with pitch, what are some tips that you can give your listeners? We already touched on this a little bit, but is there anything that your listeners can do after they pitch to you and say they get accepted and they come on your show and they're nervous and they're freaking out because they're, you know, hermit screenwriters that don't live the house and aren't sure what to do? What kind of tips do you have for anybody coming on the show? I have, a, I have a great tip, and this is going to alleviate all the anxieties in the world. You technically can submit everything to us from the comfort of your own home using just your iPhone. So you don't even have to come onto our show and or be interviewed. We have definitely sat down with writers before and interviewed them and talked about various things in the industry. But if you want to submit a pitch to us, all it takes is your 
voice record app on your iPhone and then just working through each short prompt, which is what is your three minute elevator pitch? What is your introduction? What is your why you should be telling this story? And then what is your contact information? And you can do that as many times as you need to send us the best audio file that you are comfortable with. It's super painless. We think it is at least. And when you submit or when you're reading your pitch on your iPhone, you can do as many takes as you want. Um, my favorite is looking at the writers who do submit their pitches and they add in their name and the file name and then what take it was. And we get like take 14 because it, you want to be as perfect as possible I because the, sh the show's intention is we want you to get connected to a manager or an agent or to a producer or to a director or to a creative executive. Like we want your stuff to get made. That's the point of the podcast and how how well you pitch on the show equals, hopefully equals that connection. I absolutely love that you're using pre-recorded pitches because I'm sure there's a bunch of writers out there like, man, I don't, I don't know if I can go on this show. What if I crack and I, I screw up my pitch in the middle of the interview. So the fact that people can do it at home 30 times and then send you the best version and then you send that in and put that out as a pitch. I love that. That's absolutely fantastic. Oh man, kudos to you guys. That's brilliant. Um, I have a quick question for Leah. Yeah. So Leah and I both um, pitched on our show on our first episode, just to lead by example, how many takes did it take you to get an acceptable pitch for your script? So I remember doing this at Katrina Mercedes High Rise downtown. Um, and I did four to eight takes because their cat, Sir, kept meowing. <laughs> oh, the cat, the cat kept, interrupted. I, I kept getting sirens. Or I found um, how to make it better, tighter. And the number one thing was it was too long because the way that we only accept pitches that are three minutes or less for the, right. the actual pitch, like we do writer's introductions and, and bios and why they write, write the pitch separately, but the awesome. actual pitch has to be three minutes or less. I love it. So a, a lot of standard. a lot of takes. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's great. Um I I I have a confession, guys. I edit the hell out of this show. I had to edit out a toilet flushing and then another time I had to edit out a sex doll that was in the background that I didn't catch until after the <laughs> interview. Yeah, I didn't catch it until I'm I got it in the editor. I'm editing and I'm I'm getting ready to put it on YouTube and I'm like, what the is that a I brought somebody in. Is that a, is that a sex doll? They're like, yeah. I was like, oh my god. And so then I had Why to find. I had to find. To I know, dude. I had to find blur software to put over it so that I could still keep, so I could still keep the video. People look hard enough, they'll find it. Oh, um, but uh, it's super funny. Yeah, I I do. I edit this show just to just to really make sure that people get the best version of it so i love that you guys um you guys do that for 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 your uh for your listeners and for your, yeah. your guests yeah well i think i think there's magic in editing right um so i come from i have a master's degree in poetry and i refuse to let anybody read a poem of mine until it's as done as possible yeah, because absolutely. I don't think anything that isn't as as done in your eyes as it can be cannot bear the weight of uh, criticism and not yeah. criticism as a negative but actual analytical criticism no I think you're absolutely right so editing is where the magic happens I mean that it is the rewrite it's the rewrite where you start to find the voice of the characters it's the rewrite where you start to make sure there aren't any plot holes it's the rewrite where you add the subtext I mean you're you're absolutely right um, and one of the mistakes that I've noticed from students or from writers I've worked with mentored, they'll send me a script and I'll be like, Ooh, there's some off here. And I'll say, how many drafts did you do? They'd be like, Oh, I did like two or three drafts. And I'm like, it's not enough. Do like eight more drafts, send it back to me. You're not done. I don't want to yeah. read this yet. Yeah. There's, there's a rule that I've started to utilize and people asking me for notes if i if they're not like a close friend of mine like angel i'll read anything but if they send me something my rule is i'm reading it until the first mistake mm -hmm. sometimes right. sometimes i give two because i'm like it's on the first page i'm like oh buddy 
I'll give it to two. But if that if that second mistake is within the first 10 pages, I'm stopping because you didn't care enough about my time to proof your stuff. I've read scripts you wouldn't have got past the title page. <laughs> Leah? I believe you. I believe it's you. True. Yeah.